Welcome to the next tutorial at this time about Bid Optimizer. All right, so first let's discuss what this tool is supposed to do. Similarly to other features and tools in the software, this is here to give you suggestions. It is not here to replace you, the seller or the ad manager for the account. It is here to give you suggestions of things that you might have not considered yet or maybe things you are waiting more information on in terms of per performance data and the software is telling you based on everything you already set as a criteria there is enough data to start optimizing. I want to emphasize that these are suggestions. Most questions that we receive about this tool have to do with bulk applying everything the tool tells you to do. You can do it if you want to, but keep in mind that this is semi-automated. So you are still the one giving the input to the tool. Yes, I agree. And you should go ahead and apply all your suggestions. I personally review the suggestions I receive, and that is how I get the best possible result. Now, the page setup itself has several subtabs, as you can see, one for keywords, and similarly, product targeting, auto, sponsored brands, more to come in the future, and all the other tools are going to have the same subtabs. But right now on this tool, these are already available. We are going to look at keywords. However, everything we cover here applies to the other subtabs as well. As I mentioned, there are criteria, specific parameters you tell the software before it can start working for you and give you suggestions. Here under this cogwheel settings icon, you can set those criteria at an account level. If you want to be more specific and overwrite that account level suggestion or criteria, go to add settings and you can do that for an entire product group. So several campaigns together that would overwrite whatever you set here, at least for that group. And then if you go under add settings, the other sub tab, you will be able to overwrite these settings and even the product group settings at the campaign level. So maybe the group has, for example, a target A cost I want Bid Optimizer to work with. However, one specific campaign, maybe some kind of a defense campaign like this one here, I'm willing to have a higher ACOS for, and then I would overwrite it there. Um, under Ad Settings, you will have a tutorial where I will cover this in more specific. But let's get back to Bid Optimizer. I just mentioned Target ACOS. Keep in mind that Target ACOS could be set at different levels, as I mentioned earlier. Account level here under these settings. Or if you go under Ad Settings, you will have additional options there. But let's take an example, for example, this first line row here, where our target ACOS is 28% and the tool is telling you, hey, with 25 clicks, five conversions, cost per click, $1.05 uh, average, you are right now producing an ACOS of 32.1%, which is, as you can see under reason, higher than your 28% target. Therefore, the tool is telling you, hey, let's decrease it. Now, under runtime, you can see that it has been six days. You can hover over that question mark here on runtime and read what the definition is. But basically, it's saying six days ago, this bit was last changed, and all this performance data we just looked at is calculated since that time. It's a phrase match, not giving you too much of a too aggressive change. We are not that far from target ACOS, etc. However, if I decided to look at yesterday, seven days, or any of these other metrics, the reason and the suggestions wouldn't change because the tool is still looking at runtime, which is how many days have elapsed since the last time this bid was changed. However, the rest of the metrics, the rest of the columns would give you the performance for whatever time 
window time frame you chose, let's say 60 days. Sometimes this confuses people because maybe on 60 days, maybe also on a different bid, this particular first row was producing 25% ACOS, as an example, and now they would be looking at 25 as a number here and not understanding why the tool is saying that the ACOS is over 28. You can only match these up if you are under the runtime time window. No other ones, unless it exactly matches the runtime. All right, next point. I wanted to show you what happens when you see and click on and use this round arrow here, which is basically a reset button. You are resetting the runtime. That is what you see here. The suggestion that earlier said go from 105 to 104, decreasing by one cent, that suggestion now disappeared because I clicked this button and as of today, the runtime restarts. So now it's zero days, basically. Performance data is being gathered. Once I have enough clicks, uh, ad spend for the software to calculate a new suggestion, it will do that. Until I get clicks and create some ad spend, there is nothing to review, nothing to suggest. So don't expect the tool to give you anything. When people write in asking, hey, I don't see any suggestions, that's the first thing I always ask them. You know, review if you have enough performance data for the tool to give you suggestions to begin with. Because keep in mind, this is not replacing you. This is just giving you suggestions when a lot of performance data is coming in and maybe you don't have time to review everything, starts giving you suggestions. But at the same time, we always recommend that you actively manage actively optimize your account so if you do that you might never see suggestions here all right next thing the ignore button ignore the suggestions when you hover over buttons they often tell you what they would do just as a reminder if i click this button this suggestion related to the exact here an exact match keyword this bit change would be ignored and moved to the ignored sub page here. It would never come back until I go in there and remove it from that page. However, if you think about it, unless you really just always want that bid to remain the same, you wouldn't actually ignore and remove it from this page. The feature is there in those extreme cases, you might want to use it. However, what I see users do more often, if they think, oh, I still want to continue keeping that bid at that level, regardless of the suggestion, is what we discussed before, resetting that runtime with this button. The other thing is that if you see a change, let's say here, it says 15 cents, increase it by 15 cents, you look over the metrics and you think, well, in this particular case, you know, the 126 is already a fairly high bid. I am already dominating that space or whatever the reason is, I don't want to increase it by 15 cents. Here is the pencil icon. I can change this figure to whatever I want. 127, 130, whatever I feel comfortable with. I can even decrease it if I want it to 120 and then apply that new bid. Okay, good. Then here, when I simply click the set bid to whatever the suggestion is, you can see here the new bid was suggested to be from 70 cents to 66. I press the button and here it is. Now I have that new bid set. You have an undo option. So if I click that, it would put the bid back to what it was before, which is 70 cents. And that undo is going to stay there for a little bit until basically runtime goes into its next cycle. That is just an extra feature for you in case you want to use it. So just to recap, bid optimizer is going to use the target ACOS, most directly related target ACOS to determine the changes it want to suggest on that particular keyword, for example. I am saying most relevant target ACOS 
because if you never set anything but an account level target A cost, that's what it's going to use. If you went to add settings and you set something at the product group level that is closer to this specific keyword, that overrides whatever the default account level setting is. In that case, that is what the software is going to use. Or if you want to be even more specific and specifically for this one campaign, you want to set the target ACOS, that is what it's going to use. And here on the reason, 28, 28, 25, 31, those are the figures that you see there that are set for that particular campaign or product group. In, in this case, in this account, everything is actually set at product group level. Then the next figure the tool is going to use is the runtime. So you have six days, 27 days, 58 days. All the performance data next to it and the suggestion itself is based on that length of time. Once again, under runtime, question mark, you can see the definition. By the way, also uh, all available data, you have a definition there for that too, in case you are trying to compare what you see in the software with what you see in Seller Central, you will want to read that and understand the differences between the two charts. Now, once the software has collected enough data information during that runtime, then you will see suggestions. If during these six days, there were zero clicks, there would be probably nothing to suggest on this bid in terms of change. That's why I keep emphasizing, it really doesn't replace the user. You still adjust bids as you want to, but you can also come into the tool, look at all the sub tabs and see if there are suggestions, things that the software is catching based on the criteria you set in settings and is bringing up to your attention for your consideration in deciding whether or not you want to use this input. I hope this video was useful for you. Now go ahead, gather some performance data, use the tool, try it out for yourself, see how you can get better results using this tool on your account. Good luck.